still for more than five minutes when you want them to. Any other time, they'll laze around for hours. Oh, hello. I've just been painting Puss in Boots, but he's decided to go off somewhere else. He's got a mind of his own, that cat. That's why I call him Puss in Boots, you know, like the one in the famous fairy story. He's clever, like the cat in the story, and he always wants his own way which is why he never sits still long enough for me to paint him. He's a little rascal, he is. Ooh, great! That'll be the children from upstairs. I promised them we'd make some puppets today. There you are, puss. No, it's no good running off all day. Hi, Matt. Sorry, Jessica, Hi. come in. Lovely to see you. Yeah, look. Pussy's being very naughty. Hello, Puss in Boots. Yeah. Look, he's been That's trying a to... funny name. Well, it might be a funny name to you. It's not to him. I named him after the famous fairy story. You know. Yeah, those are the bags for the yeah. puppets. Could you tell Jessica the story of Puss in Boots? Because she's never heard it. You've never heard the story of Puss in Boots? Can I believe my ears? I don't think I can. You must put this right immediately. Because I've got the story somewhere in a book over here. I think it's on the desk. Let's go and look. I know it's on this table here somewhere. Here it is. Oh, that was quick. Have you been here before? All right. You take the book and I'll tell the story. Come on. We'll sit on the sofa. And are you comfortable? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Right. Once upon a time, there was a miller who left to his three sons his mill, his donkey, and his cat. The eldest son was given the mill. The second son the donkey, and the youngest son, the cat. When the miller died, the boys had no mother or father, and the youngest son had nowhere to live. All he had was the cat. Do not worry, master, the cat said to the youngest son. If you will give me a pair of boots, I can help find us a home to live in. The miller's son was very surprised to hear the cat talk, but he was very happy to do as he was asked. He took the cat to the nearest town and with his last few coins bought Puss a pair of red leather boots. Puss put on the boots at once. He was delighted with them and proud of the way he looked. Now please get me a bag, master, Puss said. The boy couldn't think why a cat should want a bag, but he did as he was asked. Now Puss looked even more pleased. The boy gave the bag to Puss in Boots. Good, said Puss. I can have fun with this bag, and it will help to get us a home. But first, I must find some nice fresh lettuce. The boy just shook his head in wonder and laughed at Puss in Boots. Puss found some lettuce and some carrots growing nearby, so he put them in his bag. Then he set off across the fields until he found a rabbit hole. He put the bag down, hid behind some bushes, and waited. Before long, a rabbit smelt the vegetables and hopped up to the bag. As soon as the rabbit saw the vegetables in the bag, he jumped straight into it to get the food. Puss in Boots quickly jumped out from his hiding place and caught the rabbit in the bag. That's good, said Puss. Now that I have a rabbit, I can go and give it to the king. He held the rabbit tightly by the ears and set off along the path that led to the king's palace. At the palace, Puss asked to see the king. The royal servants thought the king would be very amused to see a cat wearing boots, so they led him straight to the king's dining room. Puss bowed and said in his best voice, Your Majesty, 
please accept this rabbit as a gift from my master, the Marquis of Carabas. The king already had all the food he could possibly want, but he was pleased, as he liked to eat rabbit. Please thank your master, he told Puss. Next day, Puss in Boots went out into the fields again, and this time he saw some partridges. Good, said Puss to himself. Now I can catch some partridges to give to the king. He crept away to find some food. Puss found some corn and put it in his bag. Then he put the bag down, hid behind some bushes, and waited. Before long, the partridges wandered over to the bag. They wanted the food, and they went into the bag to get it. Puss quickly jumped out from his hiding place and caught the birds. Puss in Boots set off again to the royal palace. The king was taking a walk in the palace gardens, so Puss rushed past the servants before they could stop him. He bowed to the king, and said. Your Majesty, please accept these partridges as a gift from my master, the Marquis of Carabas. The king was pleased, as he liked partridge. Please thank your master, he told Puss. Next day, Puss in Boots was sitting up in a tree while his master had his lunch. From a long way off, Puss suddenly saw the royal carriage driving along by the river. In the carriage, Puss could see the king and his daughter, who was said to be the most beautiful princess in the world. Puss jumped down from the tree and rushed to his master. "The king and his daughter are coming this way!" he cried. "If you will come with me and do as I ask, you can marry the princess, and we will all be able to live happily." "There is no time to lose," said Puss. Please jump into the river, master, and without delay. The boy didn't know what to think, but he trusted Puss in Boots, and so he jumped into the water with all his clothes on. Just at that moment, the royal carriage came by. Help! Help! cried Puss. The king and the princess looked out of the window as Puss came running up from the river. Your Majesty. My master, the Marquis of Carabas, is in the water," said Puss. "He is drowning. Please help my master." The king sent his men to help the boy. They quickly pulled him out of the water, got him out of his wet clothes, and gave him a fine new suit of clothes to put on. "Please come with me," said the king. Puss in Boots looked on proudly as his master got into the royal carriage with the king and the princess. When they set off, Puss ran on ahead of the carriage. He stopped when he reached some workmen further on down the road. The king is coming this way at this very moment," said Puss. "When he passes, please say that you are working for the Marquis of Carabas." The workmen had never heard a cat talk before, and they were so surprised that they agreed to do as he asked. A few minutes later, the royal carriage drove by. When the king saw the workmen, he stopped to ask what they were doing. The workmen bowed and dropped to their knees. "We are working for the Marquis of Carabas, Your Majesty," said the head workman. The king was impressed. That is good," he replied. Again, Puss in Boots ran on ahead of the carriage, and soon he came to an ogre's castle. Puss knocked at the door, and the ogre himself answered, "Sir, on my travels I have often heard how wonderful you are," said Puss in his nicest voice. "Can I come in?" The ogre was startled to hear a cat talking, but quickly thought how good it would be to eat a talking cat. Yes, do come in," boomed the ogre. "I have heard," said Puss, 
that you can change into any animal you choose. That is true, replied the ogre, pleased to hear that he was so famous. Then can you change into a lion, asked Puss. Oh, yes, boomed the ogre. And he instantly changed into a large, fierce-looking lion. Puss made sure he stayed at a safe distance until the ogre changed back again. That was very good, sir, said Puss, and you certainly frightened me. But it would be even more wonderful if a big fellow like you could change into a tiny animal. Do you think, for instance, you could change into a mouse? The ogre gave a bellowing laugh. Ha, ha, ha! I can change into anything I choose, he sneered. Just look at me. With that, the ogre changed into a mouse. Immediately, Puss jumped down, pounced on the mouse, caught it and gobbled it up. And that was the end of the ogre. By this time, the royal carriage was passing the castle. Puss in Boots quickly ran outside and bowed to the king. Welcome, your majesty, to the castle of the Marquis of Carabas, said Puss. Please do us the honor of coming into my master's home. The king was impressed as he and the princess entered the castle. It certainly is a good home, the king said to his daughter. Please come into the dining hall, your majesty, said Puss. There they found a wonderful feast all ready to be served. The king and the princess, the king's men and the miller's son all sat down to eat and enjoy the ogre's food. Puss in Boots stood at the king's side and the royal guests were charmed with the talking cat and his young master. Puss's master liked the princess very much, and when the feast was over, he asked her to marry him. The princess said there was no one in the world she would like better for a husband. The miller's son and the king's daughter were very happy, and the king was pleased. And so, Puss's master the princess were married, and Puss in Boots was a guest of honour at the wedding. He liked the princess very much, and the princess was good to Puss. He never had to chase mice again, except when he wanted some fun. And they all lived happily ever after. Great. You like that, didn't you? Yeah. Well, where's those paper bags you box? I promise we'd make some puppets. Just leave Puss on the sofa there. Come on then. Ah, 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 two paper bags. That one's yours, Max. That's yours, yeah. Jessica. No. We're making puppets and that's going to be the front because that's where you put the face. Yeah. All right where the folder bit happens and we've got to cut things out for eyes, ears, noses, mm. mouths and you're going to make a pussycat okay. and you're going to make an Ow. owl. Yeah, good idea. And they're roundy scissors, roundy ended scissors. Now you use yellow for the eyes, all right? And now I'll cut out the ears for you oh. in brown. Anybody object to brown? Mm. That's a good idea. Uh, I'll, cut, I'll cut them in a circle and then I can cut them in half. All right, then. And you can make whole circles by folding the card in half, can't Because he's got round eyes, I've got half eyes. Oh. There we go. Owls have big eyes, don't they? Yeah, big staring eyes. Do you want the glue? Yeah, I want the glue. Yes. Oh, I like glue. A barn owl. Yeah. How can you tell the difference? Don't know. Could you do my beak for me? Yeah, sure. What colour? Yellow? Yeah. One yellow beak. You can be sticking your ears on when I'm making your beak. Do you want this? Yeah, do you feel this with a felt tip?
like that. Put it on top and get some sticky tape. This is two sided sticky tape. Oh. Do I cut it off for you? Down firmly. Right. I get a corner of it. Have you stuck your wings on yet, Max? How many more feathers have you got? And there they are, the owl and the pussycat. And you know, I know a poem about an owl and a pussycat. In fact, they need a boat for this, and I have one, which I painted earlier. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. That's that. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar, smaller than that. A lovely pussy, a pussy, my love, what a beautiful pussy you are. You are, what a beautiful pussy you are. Oh, beautifully sung. Pussy's going to sing back in a minute. And here she comes. Pussy said to the owl, Oh, you elegant fowl, and how charmingly sweet you sing. Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried. But what shall we do for a ring? So they sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there in a wood, a piggy wig stood with a ring at the end of his nose. His nose with a ring at the end of his nose. Things are looking up. They found a ring. They may be able to be married. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling that ring? Said the piggy, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey that lived on the hill. And they dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand at the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon, the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. Ah, oh, very romantic and very silly. Just lend me your puppet a minute, will you? Thanks, Jessica. No, no. You put yours there. Do you want to play a game with the puppet? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Play a game? Yes. We'll play a game called Puss Says. Now listen very carefully, because you can play this as well. Now, Puss is going to tell you to do certain things. And if Puss tells you to do them, then you do them. But if Puss doesn't tell you to do them, then you don't do them. But if you do do them, you're then you're out. out of the game. Here's your first round. Puss says, hands on your head. Puss says, arms by your sides. Puss says, close your eyes. Open your eyes again. Ah, you're too quick for me. Did you get caught out then? Well, we'll see if you get caught out on the next go. Puss says, put your fingers in your ears. Puss says, close your eyes. Puss says, open your mouth. Now, open your eyes at the same time. You did, I got you! <laughs> <laughs> All right, just because you'll go. Okay. Okay. You can have the chair. Right. And I'll do it. See if you can catch me. Ha ha. Thank uh, chance. Easy. Go on then. Whenever you're ready. Puss has touched your head. <laughs> <laughs> Puss has closed.
Close your mouth. This is open your mouth. Close your mouth. <laughs> <And there. laughs> Did you do it? Yeah. <laughs> Very clever. Maxie's go. Come on. Oh. Right. Right. Puss says, put your hands on your head. Puss says, take them off your head. <laughs> Puss says, touch your shoulders. Puss, Puss says, take them off. Uh, Puss says, touch your eyebrows. Puss says, close your eyes. Puss says, hold your nose and close your eyes. Uh, touch your mouth. Out. Oh! <laughs> it's only because I have my eyes closed. Anyway, I think it's time to feed the cat. That's yeah, she must be hungry. And not the paper one, oh. the real one. Oh. one. He's over there. Here we are, chaps. Food at last. I bet he's desperate for this. Do you fancy? Mm. Mm. Not really. Oh, smells all right Not to me. Really. It's okay. Well, he likes it. I'm going to ask my mum and dad if I can have a kitten. Well, that's a good idea. But they can have a lot of fun with kittens, but they're very hard work, you know, and a lot of responsibility. And one of the responsibilities is feeding them. Jessica, give him some food, will you? Thanks. Good girl. What do kittens need? They need food, 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 food. Water, water, room, room, yes, space, space to move about in. And when you go away, they need someone to look after them. Yeah, and shelter they need. So what would you do if you had to go away? You'd give it to someone to look neighbor. after. Neighbour. Neighbour or something. Because it's they easy for me, you see, when I go away, because your mum and dad look yeah. after my cat, don't they? We like it when we look after puss. Because we uh, can play with her. That's right. And he, he only needs two me meals a day, doesn't he? But a kitten needs four, four, four meals, meals a day. day. So it's even more hard work with a kitten, isn't it? Mm. Still going to ask for a kitten? Yeah. yeah. Well, you remember all those things, won't you? Mm. Yeah, we better wash our hands now as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wash your hands, Jessica. <laughs> One at a time. Because you know all the um, all the wild cats. You know wild cats. They have yeah. to look for their own food out in the wild. What kind of cats do you know out in the wild? Lions, tigers, <laughs> what panthers, else? panthers, leopards. Yeah. Cheetahs. Cheetahs. You know a lot, don't you? What are they called? They're called big cats. And we've got lots of film of big cats. I wonder if you can recognise them. You see how many you can recognise.
There you are, you see? All cats are intelligent, aren't they? They always know exactly what they want. And that puss knew what he wanted, didn't he? Let's have a look at the book, Jessica. And we'll find out exactly what he wanted, because he was always asking his master for things. Here we are. Here he is with his master on the first page. Here is Puss with his master. The boy has no mummy or daddy. Oh. Is he an orphan, orphan yeah, then? Yeah, he's an orphan. So that's what you called a no mummy and daddy, isn't it sad? And not only that, he has no home. <sighs> Still, he asked his master for something, didn't he? What did he ask for? So, for some red leather boots. You've got a good memory, haven't you? Red leather boots. And there he is in the shop asking for the boots. What what, what other boots could he have chosen from? What he could have chosen those red ones, there. But They're not shoes. red. What colour are those? They're green. Green. Greens. Ballet shoes. Ballet shoes. And some heels. pink high heels. Oh, pink high heels. And some and blue ones. With bows on. Yeah. But no, he chose the red, the red ones. ones. Jessica, you can read this. I can help you to get a home, says Puss. Get me some boots, please. It's very polite, Cat, isn't it? Have you seen my marker, my pussycat marker? That's good. It's good, yeah. Did so, you paint it? Oh, I painted that myself, yes. It means we can take Puss for a walk every time we read. All the way down. All the way down. And what a very, what a very pleasant cat. He always says please, doesn't yep. he? What else now? Puts the boots on. on. I look good in my boots, he says. Please get me a bag, master. Please get me a bag, master. What does he want a bag for? Keep, put uh, lettuce in it. Put lettuce in it? Well, what else would you and want to bag for? And carrots. Of course you would. But why does he want to do that? Well, let's find out. Ah, yeah. now ah, we here see. Here it is. Lettuce and carrots. Lettuce and carrots. But what for, Max? Catching a rabbit. To catch a rabbit. Brilliant. You read this bit, Max. Puss put some food into the bag. He puts it down. A rabbit comes up to the bag. The rabbit sees the food. food. It jumps into the bag to get the food. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's a good plan, isn't it? And what does Puss do then? He, he jumps out of his hiding place and catches the rabbit in the bag. Puss gets the rabbit. Puss... Just a minute, Just a minute Jessica. Ready? Puss gets the rabbit. OK, Max. Puss gets, gets the, the rabbit. rabbit. Yeah. And what does he say when he gets the rabbit? I can give it to the king. king. Jessica. I can give it to the king. Max. I can give it to the king. So he gets his rabbit and there it is in his colourful bag. And he's off. There's the castle in the background. Kings always live in castles, don't they? And palaces. And palaces, that's right, yeah. I hope the king likes rabbits. Jessica? The king is pleased. Very good. Max? The king is pleased. Pleased. Yeah. But he's still got a lot of food to eat. He doesn't really need the rabbit, does he? Look, what's there? It's got a pig. Yeah, pig's head. Pig's head, yeah. And it's got apples around it. Apples, yeah. Is that a fish? That's a fish there. A chicken. That's a whole chicken there. And might... that's got legs on already. Yeah, might be a duck, that, mightn't it? Could be. Could be something else. Let's have a look. Ah, now what's this? Puss. See some partridges. Max. Puss sees some partridges. There's a song about partridges, isn't there? Are there? Which one? The Twelve Days of Christmas. And a partridge in a pear tree. tree. It's the last one, yeah. isn't it? What are partridges? They're birds. <laughs> They're birds. What sort of birds? They're like fat pigeons. <laughs> anyway, there they are. Those are the fat pigeons or the partridges. <laughs> but how does he as catch he them? them. See? He puts some corn in the bag. In his bag, yes. And hides behind the bush. <clears throat> and the partridges see the corn and think, Mmm, food. So just like the rabbit, they, they go into in. the bag. And, and Puss in Boots catches the partridge. And what does that line say? 
Puss gets, gets the, the partridges. partridges. That's very cunning, isn't he, Puss? Yes. Yeah. He doesn't care. Puss sees, sees the, the king. king. He gives them to the king like he did with the rabbit. That's right. And... Good, says the king. I like partridges. Not much he doesn't like, is there? No. Nope. That's everything he gets. Yeah. And he gets everything. I wonder why. Maybe Puss, Puss guesses, or maybe he knows. Ah. Perhaps he's read it in the local paper. <laughs> what do you think? Here, Here come, come the, the king, king and, and princess. The, the, the king and the princess. You missed the there. Now, do it once more. Here, Here come. come the king and the princess. princess. Very good. So he says, come with me and you can... Marry the princess. Well, this is a to-do, isn't it? I wonder what this is all about. Don't know how you could just say you can marry the princess when you haven't even asked her. No. Well, Puss is cleverer than that. I think yeah. he's got a plan worked out, don't you? Yeah. So he like says... he did with the others, yeah. like the animals. Jessica, what does he say? Get into the water, says Puss. With his clothes on. What a stupid <laughs> boy. <laughs> ah, but he's soaked. No, but he's not that stupid, really, is he? Because the king... And the princess come. come. Puss says, help, help. Please come and help. My master. Max, you do. Please come and help. My master. So, this looks like it might be a good plan after all. And look, there's the princess. So, he not only gets a new set of clothes, but he gets to travel with... The princess. The princess. Now we're getting to the nitty-gritty, right? This is a good part. This is a good bit, good bit. Yeah, I like yeah, this yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Puss comes to an ogre's home. Jessica, you do that line. Puss comes to an ogre's home. Max, you do that. Puss comes to an ogre's home. What's an ogre? A sort of like giant. Like they can a turn into things. Yeah, sort of like a a big, big, big giant. A big, big, big giant. Yeah. Oh, I a see. giant, giant. A, oh, a giant. Yeah, giant. Yeah, giant, giant. I see. Yeah. Okay. Jessica, what happens next? Puss says to the ogre, "Can you change into a lion?" All right, Max, you try that. Puss says to the ogre, can you change into a lion? Well, you can see from the picture. Yes. yes he turns into a lion. It's not a very fierce lion. So, I wonder if a lion would eat a cat? Well, you would have put in his family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Let's see if he does. Yeah. Well... That was good, says Puss to the ogre, but... Jessica. Can you change into a mouse? Max, you try it. Can you change into a mouse? And, of course, the ogre says... Yes. Yes, yes of course he does. Look at me. Look at me, he says. He <laughs> must be a terrible show off this ogre. The ogre changes into a mouse. I bet he can't run very fast when he's a mouse. So what happens when he does... What does Puss do? He gets the mouse and eats it. I wouldn't like to eat an ogre very much. <laughs> That's a really smart one. Don't like ogres anyway. No, we don't need them, do we? I wouldn't want to eat an ogre, though, would you? Well, I wouldn't be fussed. The king might like one, no? <laughs> he likes most things. Here we are. And the king's just coming by that very minute. What a stroke of luck. Right. The king comes. Come in, says Puss. This is my master's home. Yeah, so he pretends the ogre's castle is... His. His. His, his master's, master's castle. castle. And that's why he's called him the Marquis of... Carabas. 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 So, they come in here, they come in here and eat, mm. says Puss. So they... Go in and eat. The ogre's food. That's it. Max, you have a go at that. They go in and eat the ogre's food. It's all eating in this story, isn't mm. it? What have they got to eat on this one? Jelly. Jelly. Cheese. 
potatoes, cakes, cake, biscuits, cornflakes. Just in case of stuff for breakfast. All right. <laughs> What's next? Pussy's master likes the princess. Well, I think that's the luckiest thing so far. Wouldn't it have been terrible if you didn't like her after yeah. all that effort? She looks like she's a nice type of person, doesn't she? Well, she's got lipstick on her cheek. Has she? Yeah. Well, perhaps it gives her a bit of colour, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, what happens then, Jessica? Purser's master marries the princess. Puss is pleased. He likes the princess. And the princess is good to Puss. And I think she ought to be after all that effort, don't you? I think it's time that you two went off and had your tea now. Oh, yeah. but I've just remembered I've got something before you go. I knew you'd be thrilled. And here it is, the picture of our very own Puss in Boots. But before you take it, I've got to put the title on it first, all right? Puss in Boots. There we are, your very own Puss in Boots to take home with you. And there's more. How do you fancy going home like a pussycat? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can do it, we can do it. I've got some special paint here. Who wants to make themselves up? Me. Yeah, I thought you might. <laughs> All right, there's yours. And this very special washable paint, right. Says, right? So it comes off with water, but don't use any other type. Because your mother won't be very pleased with me. Go on, there's a mirror. We've only got these ones, how can I use another type? Well, use those then. <laughs> she does, go on, go on. And I'll do you, all right? Now then, we use the white one. Here's the white one. Max, here we go. Yep. Start with the white. We go round here. We go round here. How many, uh, how many whiskers? with you? Yes, please. Of course you do. Come on, you can have these. And don't forget, don't forget this. No, we mustn't forget the Don't painting. forget the painting, Puss in Boots. Show everybody, let's show everybody. You look smashing, don't you? Bye. Say goodbye. 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 Off you go, quickly. Wait. Take your bits with you. Okay.